So besides the safety function that we have seen, there is another important uh, safety concept, which is uh, the defense in depth. Defense in depth is not something specific to the nuclear industry because it can be used in any kind of activity in, in other industries, but it has known some specific development in the in the nuclear uh, industry. So basically, defense in depth uh, is to imagine any potential equipment failures or organizational or human errors and to implement several successive line of protection. If something goes wrong, you will have a first barrier or the first way of avoiding the consequence. And if this first barrier of this uh, first system fail, you will have a second line of protection and even a third line of protection. So you know, in, in that the case in that uh, with that kind of configuration you will need two three or four successive failure from an initial problem to get uh, uh, any significant consequences we consider three categories of line of defense that we call prevention monitoring and mitigation and these are developed in five level at the design stage so the first level is the prevention of uh, uh, anomaly. This is done through the quality of the products, the quality of the design, the margin taken in the designing of the various components, and in operation to some limit of operation, limits in the uh, uh, domain of, uh, of operation. The second level of defense in depth is monitoring and detection of uh, anomaly. Three, uh, this is done through uh, several surveillance or uh, instrumentation uh, to uh, be able to follow the various uh, parameters. The third level is uh, serve as mitigating the consequence of design basis accident through uh, various uh, safety system or emergency system in order to uh, even if the uh, accident occurs that the, the consequence will be very limited. The, the fourth level if uh, the accident occur and uh, that the safety system uh, designed to uh, control them fails or are not sufficiently efficient. There, there is a force level to control the development of severe accident that is uh, to control the, uh, the, the, the accident that I turn in uh, uh, core melting and, and to avoid the release of uh, activities outside the containment. And the last, the fifth and last uh, level of the defense is, is, depth, is to protect the environment. Uh, if uh, all the first, the, the fourth level have failed, uh, this, uh, the protection of the environment and the public uh, is uh, uh, obtained through uh, some sort of emergency planning such as evacuation of the population of confinement of the population uh, around uh, the plant. So this is another way to represent the defense in depth uh, concept and this it's five level. So the first uh, one uh, is a prevention of uh, abnormal operation and failure of the component. That is uh, achieved through a very conservative design and the high quality of construction and uh, operation, of course. So the second level, the purpose is to, to monitor the system and to control the development of uh, any uh, abnormal operation and detection of failures. This is done through a lot of instrumentation surveillance feature and uh, in order to, to control the, uh, <coughs> the, the various transitions, uh, in some case to include some limitation. So the <coughs> third level 
is the, the control of uh, accidents which are considered in the design basis. This, um, if an accident occurs, such as a, a loss of coolant accident that we will see a little bit later, uh, some safety system uh, such as uh, safety injections or containment system or emergency operation system. So these systems are deemed to uh, limit the consequence of these accidents and to uh, remain the plants in the in the design basis without without consequence. But if these fail, we got to the fourth level, which is the uh, severe accident where there might be some fuel degradation and even some uh, core melting. And so <clears throat> the purpose here uh, is to, to, to prevent the, uh, any accident progression and to mitigate the, the consequence of that through the, the containment. So um, the, the, the main role here and the main action is to manage the accidents, ensuring that the containment remain leak tight and that there, there is no release. And if this fail, we <laughs> got to the, fi the fifth level, uh, which is to try to, to mitigate the radiological consequence of the ac accidents and uh, the release of radioactive material. And this is the main role of the uh, emergency response organization, both on-site and uh, off-site with the public authority. So you have here the, uh, the five uh, level of the defense in depths, uh, the, their condition and the various feature taken to uh, meet, to uh, prevent, uh, monitor and uh, mitigate the consequence of, uh, of accidents. Another way of uh, presenting the defense in depth concept is uh, what we call the three barrier model. The idea uh, is to have between the radio active products inside produced by, by the fission reaction inside the fuel and the environment, three different leak tight barrier. The first being the fuel rod itself and its cladding. The second being the reactor coolant system and the third one, the containment. Another way of, of presenting that is uh, this uh, uh, Russian doll. Uh, which insert one in each other and uh, you again see here the fuel rod cladding inside then the reactor coolant system pressure boundary and, and the containment. You will see another illustration of this uh, three barrier model in the, the next small uh, video. Containment of the reactivity depends on the integrity of the three containment barriers the three successive walls between the fission products and the environment. The first barrier is the cladding of the fuel rods. The second barrier is the pressure boundary of the reactor coolant system. The third barrier is the containment vessel. Each has its own particularities. The fuel rod cladding is in direct contact with the radioactive material to be contained. This is a multiple barrier Depending on the power rating of the reactor, there are between 40,000 and 50,000 rods. The first barrier is subjected to a number of challenges. Thermal effects at the boundary between the fuel material and the cooling water. Mechanical effects, including pressure and vibration. And also the effect of irradiation, as intense neutron and gamma radiation is continuously passing through it. To preserve the cladding, it must first be ensured that heat is removed at all times and as effectively as possible. Otherwise, the result will be melting of this first barrier. The second barrier, which is the reactor coolant system pressure boundary, is a complex arrangement of large chambers and pipes, such as the primary loops. It also comprises a number of ancillary systems connected to the loops, consisting of many pipes of different diameters. Here, the challenge is the extremely high pressure to which a system is subjected, requiring thick walls. There is a danger of pressure excursions well beyond the normal operating levels, 
as well as eventual fatigue of the materials as a result of the pressure and the associated risk of leakage. The third barrier, consisting of the containment vessel, is extremely large and of apparently simple geometry, but it is traversed by numerous pipes and cables which can constitute weak points where leakage can occur. Here, the risk is associated with contingent thermal stresses and overpressure in the event of the sudden release of a large amount of steam in the reactor building. Special care is needed to ensure that the penetrations are leak tight, as this third barrier represents the last line of defense protecting the environment against the dispersal of radioactive material in the event of a severe accident. It must be borne in mind that the three barriers are not totally independent, and the failure of one can have repercussions for the others. For instance, in the event of failure of the large pipe making up one of the loops, and hence loss of the second barrier, leakage of coolant would compromise cooling of the fuel, resulting in a major risk for the first barrier while flashing of the water at 300 degrees to steam in the reactor building would also challenge the third barrier by exposing it to extreme heat and pressure. It is also because the three barriers are not totally independent that so much care has to be paid to them. But there is a, 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 tricky, a little bit tricky point uh, with on, on the third barrier because there is an extension. Actually if you look at the steam generator we are here inside the reactor building so inside the third barrier and here outside the reactor uh, building so outside the containment and there is this uh, steam piping uh, penetration of the containment and so actually that means that uh, there is a, sa uh, a safety valve here. Actually, that's uh, uh, to the fact that the the, the outside of uh, the, the this part of the steam generator would communicate with the outside of containment. So that means that at this level, the steam generator tubes, which constitute the barrier, uh, the, the limit of the uh, reactor coolant system, of the primary system, of the second barrier, is at the same time the limit between the second and the third barrier. So at the level of the steam generator tubes, the second and the third barrier are uh, combined. It's the same components that play the two roles. This um, underlies the importance of uh, these tubes uh, because uh, the two barriers are, are combined at, at this level and so it's very important to uh, mon first uh, to, to design with a, uh, adapted material these tubes and then during the operation to control any leaks and to control uh, periodically <coughs> the health condition of this material through uh, non-destructive uh, examination and this is an important part of uh, the maintenance uh, during shutdown of, of the reactor. So to summarize, defense in depth it's a very uh, important tool of, of safety analysis. Uh, it uh, could be applicable not only during the uh, design phase of a reactor but also uh, during all this operation and also uh, during the decommissioning. Uh, it could be applied not only at, on technical issues but also on uh, technical, non-technical issues some, as uh, some organizational aspect or uh, uh, human behavior aspects. And even in day-to-day -day life, you know, for instance, just uh, when you are, want to cross the street you have a look uh, on the left and on the right to see if you can go. <laughs> and so this looks is a sort of element of defense in depth.